So uh, before we end, there's one more speaker, a good friend of mine, Betty. She's here to talk about uh, the future of not me, but the future of we. Betty? Future of the future, the future, of future, of work. future, of future, future, of future of work. I believe in the future uh, work. We'll, you'll have multiple jobs. Most of those jobs you'll have created yourself. You'll be a member of multiple um, work groups and you won't know what you'll be doing six months from now. In five words, owners of robots make money. That's all. Workers who are providing slavery might be cheaper than robots. So you might see an increase in slavery in warfare prostitution. That, that's your worst case scenario. The characteristics of water are the kind of analogy that I plan to be using to compare the, uh, the labor markets and work itself. I think the future of work is about purpose and joy. Because when we're working on something in line with our purpose, we feel joy. That gives us energy and it lets us cope with anything. And that brings competitive advantage to the organizations we work for. That's why I think the future of work is about purpose and joy. Everyone owns their job. We are artists in our own fields, breaking and bending unimportant rules every now and then. We have to bridge from a world of violent cultural divides to a connected world in which all predictable labor is automated. And time frame. If we have access to the means of production, raw materials, tools, land, etc., do we still need to sell our labor? Technology may well enable us to thrive without our being indebted to others for our livelihood. In the future of work, jobs will be either done by machines or by creatives who love their work so much that they would also do it without compensation, provided the basic needs are met. We define sustainability as the quality of our relationships. What this means in relation to the future of work is the introduction of the five universal human values of peace, love, truth, right action and non-violence. But in terms of the future of work, I see far more focus on this question of being, who we are as human beings. And when you combine innovation with a deeper contemplation of being, then you have evolution whereby work is more than a function of spending whole days at the office and more than just a function of office politics and making money. I see the future of work more than just work. It'll be a calling for each other to fulfill with a genuine interest in improving the conditions of the world without worrying excessively about the monetary constraints. It'll be an integration and more so a flow with the other aspects of our lives. The future of work relies on our ability to empower others as well as ourselves. Um, I think the future of work would be automated and the most valuable things the workers can do is to in innovate themselves to create uh, creative solutions. Traditionally, right, um, when people talk about work, if you're not paid, is that considered work? So a few weeks ago, I was on Facebook talking to this friend in Australia, and um, I shared about wanting to do this video. And um, he said he's interested to help out. And I said, um, can you do the compilations? It's OK. So what I started doing was um, I, I started begging and um, chasing a lot of people. And finally, you, got, you saw what you just did just now, because um, some brave souls came forward to share their views, so we have this video now, this snippet. But since, since what we did, uh, since we did this for zero, no money, right, is it considered work? Traditionally, unless you, are, you get paid for doing something, it's not really considered work. So um, the speech that I'm making today, the preparation took me almost the whole of last week. And um, Gabriel, Kelvin, do you consider what I'm doing work? Because I'm not getting paid. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> good, good, good. So um, what I'm trying to say is, um, and then as an introvert who hates memorizing, just so I'm having this notes, I can tell you that it is work. Um, the cost so far for the cost so far for our CropPulse website on WordPress is only $25 over there. And um, it's to pay for this SL, S, SSL certificate. A friend in Finland helped me put, together, put it, to help it set, set it up, and someone offered free hosting. So since the structure of work has um, totally changed, and we will increasingly work remotely with people we may never meet, I believe it's critical to start creating opportunities for strangers anywhere to build trust with one another. So it's very different from um, what you've seen with the other speakers so far. Okay, this is my presentation proper. <laughs> so when the first dot-com era happened, it was in um, 2001, thereabouts. Everything just kind of um, clicked for me. Technology is just a tool, but I grasp how it may power or enable this age of, age of we. This is an, I wrote an article, article um, recently. Although it's been 15 years, you're still stuck in this paradigm shift between two very vastly different cultures. If you can truly empower everyone to be the best you can be, I believe our shared future can be quite amazing. Since young, I have, um, I have a need for people and the world to make sense. Globally, there are at least 7.4 billion of us. 7.4 billion of us. Singapore is only about, has about 5 million, 5.4 million. So 7.4 of us, 7.4 billion of us around the world, and out of which 62 people today own as much wealth as um, half the world's population combined. And if you take, uh, if you have a net worth of at least um, US $3,210. We already belong to the wealthier half of the world population. Does that make sense? This crazy wealth gap poses the greatest challenge we face essentially because trust in the age of me is broken. For a long time, it's been obvious to me that the future, especially of work, will not, cannot be business as usual. So a world that brings out the worst in us just doesn't make sense. I live most of my adult years in Hong Kong. And um, some bigger companies I worked for included Ernst & Young, Hong Kong Telecom, and Johnson LaSalle. My background is in branding and communications, but um, working in-house, you try to ensure everything works before you launch a campaign. So a large part of, my, a large part of what I did was uh, fine-tuning business processes. Yes, I know how painful politi office politics can be. When Pansy Ho first um, joined Shintech Holdings, she she um, hired me to start up and um, head up their corporate affairs and development division. I was too busy also being the group HR manager when um, her dad, Stanley Ho, wanted me to be, their PR, to be his PR lady. So Pansy gave me incredible opportunities to actualize a lot of ideas. Because nothing seemed impossible, it was, it was very addictive and I, became, I worked really very hard. I finally, finally left because I was exhausted and um, also because I didn't want to take charge of re entering the entire conglomerate. There were about 2,000 people at that time. Since um, the turn of the century, I've been on a roller coaster voyage of self discovery, observing and learning by doing exploring how to drive actualizing a happier world. So, oops. So I even shared with my ex-boss at, uh, at Ernst and Young, telling him that each of us has the perfect gift to give the world, and um, it's what we were born with. If we are each able to give for what's, so, what's uniquely, uniquely ours, wouldn't, be, we, wouldn't we be able to create magic for and with each other? So Brian Stevenson told me I was trying to turn the Titanic. The Titanic being people's mindset. So when I finally left uh, traditional employment about 2004, I went from nothing seemed that impossible to everything is so hard to do.
um, in the age of me, the business, businesses operate, operate much like a factory assembly line because knowledge is hoarded. Everything is planned, sometimes blindly from the top, and executed by people usually working in um, haphazard silos. As firms create, push, and sell stuff, value is produced upstream and consumed downstream because very few people benefit financially. Being seen to, being seen to own status symbols and high assets is a sign of success in this age. While the impact of technology, technology may be exponential, the, this age of uh, me, me thinking tends to be linear. So I was born, go to school, start my career, get married, start a family, etc., etc. Very much factory assembly line thinking. So what if the next 20 years really changes humanity more than the last 300 years? Our future is highly unpredictable because the, ch the challenges are exponential and sy uh, systemic. Over the years where I shared possibilities for a happier world, people will look at me with gold, um, goldfish eyes. So I don't, know, don't see goldfish eyes today. <laughs> so because the age of me is the complete opposite of the age of we, and uh, we are still stuck in the, the yellow bar, our problems are either clouds or clouds. To fix a clock, clock or clouds. Sorry. To fix a cl clock, you take it apart, examine the parts before putting it back together. With a cloud, you can only observe it as a dynamic, shifting, morphing whole. But since um, taking things apart and breaking things down gives us a sense of power and control. Too many people still use cloud thinking to address cloud systemic problems. Then they, real, then they wonder why the problems still remain or become worse. The age of me is more form about what we own, whereas the age of we is more about substance, about what we share. So once about outward, outward appearances, like what we dress and what um, house you own kind of thing, whereas the other is more about in, innate talents. So true abundance, true abundance happens when each of us can openly apply our knowledge and our gifts to empower one another to be our best for everybody's benefit. So instead of competing against each other, the only person we try to be better than is the person we were yesterday. We're living in potentially the most fascinating phase of transformation humanity has ever seen. To be able to truly become the best you can be, not for ourselves or our families, but for everyone. There is no magic formula because everyone can do something in our own unique ways. To learn, to relearn, to unlearn, to relearn by creating opportunities for strangers anywhere, to build trust with each other, to show by doing, not just talking. Of course, you can still choose to remain in the age of me, in the competitive age of me. But do remember, please, it's how a person with money hires a person without for the lowest possible salary to make as much money as possible, as much profit as possible for the one with money. Already, automation, artificial intelligence, and robotics are replacing many jobs. There are also too many reports saying most people globally will be jobless in X number of years. If very few people have jobs or just do gigs, how can we pay for living expenses like food, shelter, clothing, transportation, etc., etc., which keep getting more and more expensive? Some countries like Finland and New Zealand are looking to universal basic income where everyone will regularly receive an unconditional sum of money. To truly prepare for this age of we, we need to completely rethink everything and not just use the same thinking which you use to create the problems. To get everyone's best input, we need an empowering culture where strangers dare trust one another first. That's why we have created opportunities for strangers anywhere to cross a book, 
it's more an open ex social experiment to observe human behavior regarding our shared future. If you want a shot at um, getting our free ebook, when, when, or rather, if it is released, please key in the number you see on the on the screen. Have you got your mobile phones out, or you just um, not interested? So, if you have taken out your mobile phones, type in your name, email address, your passion. It could be whatever your authentic. Authentic passion is could be writing, designing, could be social media, design, um, singing, dancing, whatever. So the first person whose SMS I randomly open with the correct answer at the end of my presentation will get our ebook when it's available. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready. You sure? Okay. Oh. Don't send me any SMS yet. You have to answer the question. <laughs> okay, explain something I've been doing since 2001. What is it to self actualize? I haven't got any SMS yet. Have you all finished um, thinking what it is to self actualize? No one knows. <sighs> okay, I'll just share it with you. Oops, I got one response. Okay, the cutoff time is now. To, um, The current time is okay. This is the current time. Okay. Um, okay, I've got that. Since just okay. Since just a, just about everything we need for our lives can be bought. Example: the food we eat, the water we drink, the clothes we wear, the house we live. Is that why most people just expect to enter the future, just you know, do the same and just enter the future? Hey, y'all, please stop. Oops, I got a few more minutes left. Okay, um, our ebook will probably take a year to complete and to go to market. It's an experiment, and it may still tank if you if you can't find at least eleven more people to commit to making it happen. So, broad guidelines are on our website. And there is no business plan, and everything is work in progress. So we need help in that sense. While the focus is on um, relationship, relationship building, net, net revenue, if any, will be equally shared with key crop power, powers. So we're still looking for people. Before, before we can move from scarcity to abundance, the world has to experience an authentic paradigm shift. What we have. What we have in abundance are the gifts we, we are born with. By embarking on, our, on your journey, voyage of self-discovery, you will discover what they are and um, grow to become a human being. So, um, so dare to self-discover, dare to experiment, dare to unlearn to relearn. Start by opening, openly enabling strangers anywhere to be in the world to build trust with one another, and you're most welcome to join our social experiment. With your help, this is our, this is our for me maximization movement that I'm hoping to start with a new about a new way of thinking, doing, and sharing. As we don't even have our we, we don't even have our own central engagement platform. So please like our page on Facebook. True abundance happens when. It, Every one of us empowers one another to be our best for everybody's benefit. And may your potential as an authentic human being become visible very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. You're welcome. Okay.